Hey guys, welcome back. I'm finally going to be doing a little bit of work to the paperboy cabinet today. Um, I want to get the side art off, team molding off, get the coin door out. Um, then I'm probably going to go see if I have some sort of hinges or something I can use for the back door. And then I got to dig the control panel out as well. Now I was looking at the side art earlier and I think the whole paper and everything's going to come with it. So a lot of these old Atari cabinets, um, <clears throat> they just had a paper over top of this particle board. So what I'm going to end up doing is, as you can see right here, I'm just going to peel it all off. And what I'm going to do is sand this down and I'm going to body and I'm going to filler prime it, probably sand it and filler prime it a second time. I want to try to get this as smooth as possible because I'm going to use a side art, a full side art on this cabinet. Um, I like the colored side art, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there. So basically what I'm going to do is just peel this off, get it all body worked and everything, get all the nicks and everything fixed, and I'm just going to paint the whole entire cabinet black, and then I'll apply new artwork over the sides. It should cover the whole entire side, and then the front and everything, obviously, will be just satin black like it's supposed to be. Yeah, unfortunately, this is really the only way you can fix these Atari cabinets like this is you just gotta rip this stuff off. You cannot save it and try to go over it because it's not gonna work. And of course we have all the typical particle board nicks all around the edge that are a pain in the butt to fix, but we'll get them fixed. At least uh, the artwork removal is quick. Hopefully the uh, front isn't going to do the same thing because I believe Okay, sorry about that. I had to stop for a second. Um, all right, so I peeled it off of this side it Only took a couple minutes. It looks like I'm gonna have to peel all the black off the front as well um, Let's go on the other side and see if that'll peel off as easy as this side did um, There's a little bit of swelling on the back here You could feel it it's kind of ripply, but we'll sand all that down. Right here, you could tell um, it might have been wet at one time, but it's pretty flat. But all the edges are swelled up a little bit. Typical uh, particle board cabinet. Um, let's see if we can peel this side off as easy as the other, and then we can check the front and see how that works. Out. I had to use a razor blade a little bit at the bottom on the other side. Oh, and I went last night and I picked up an arcade game for a guy that I've done another one for and I'm going to be restoring it for him. And it's still in the back of my van because I did not get home last night until almost 11 o'clock. 10.30 maybe it was. I got home last night from picking it up. So we're going to restore it and send it to him. We did a Donkey Kong. I did a Donkey Kong for him, a red one. Donkey Kong 3 cabinet. And it is in my videos. Uh, same guy, just a different game. I'll show, you, I'll show it to you when I uh, pull it out of the van. So basically, I'm just taking my razor blade and just getting underneath that paper. But yeah, don't try to do your body work and primer and stuff over this paper because it's going to fail. And then all that money you spent on the product, you're going to have to throw away and start over. And I want this to be really nice because it's a paper boy. So you don't want to half-ass it to save some money, you know, on a game like that. You know how nice this is to be able to feel this like this and not have to take a heat gun and the stress of trying to scrape it off and it takes an hour aside to get the artwork off. And this literally takes like two minutes. Can't even tell you how many cabinets I've had to take the artwork off of and it literally was like a nightmare. 
that's the only good thing about this. I had a um, a uh, Indiana Jones cabinet that did the exact same thing. I had to peel it right off down to the bare wood. So now I'm trying to get my razor blade under this edge here. Maybe I can start from down here. Yeah, see the bottom on the other side was kind of stuck just like this side. I don't know why it does that on the bottom. Maybe because it was wet. But I'm going to go ahead and I'll get the rest of this off down here and then we'll come back and we'll check out the front. Okay, I got 99% of it off. There's a little bit down there. I'll just sand that when I got to fix that bottom anyways. Like I sit there and keep trying to scrape it off. And you can see on the front here, this is peeling. So we're gonna have to take it all off the front as well. Basically gonna have a bare particle board cabinet that I have to uh, fix. But we are going to make this perfect. That is my goal. Make this look brand new. I mean, you really don't have a choice when it's in this kind of situation. I mean, you could just leave it alone, but I mean, how much longer until this stuff starts falling off the rest of the way, you know? And then you're just left with a game that you have to take back apart and fix. But back then, you know, they were building these as cheap as possible and particle board was probably the cheapest material they could get. Now, I don't know if this paper was applied at the factory or if it came already applied to the particle board you know when they started making the cabinets that i am not sure about um, we have some peeling in here now what i think i'm going to do here is probably just peel it to here and this in here looks pretty good i don't know if i should try leaving it now it's peeling up here too i'm gonna have to peel it off there too basically you're gonna have to take it off of the whole entire cabinet and start over with what well, we're going to do it with paint primer and paint we're not going to use uh i'm not going to use laminate or anything like that just crazy how loose that is that has to be something to do with moisture or just age or using my razor blade here and cutting it flush with everything so that nobody will ever notice that it's behind there yeah I want to make this cabinet really nice I want to preserve it for another 40 years or whatever it's been Should probably pull this t-molding off real quick I'll do that in a minute so basically I'm just gonna take my knife here just cut right on the edge of that wood and right on the cleat that holds the glass for the marquee. Um, I measured these speakers this morning. They're five and a quarter. So I bought some cheap car replacement speakers. They're really, they're not like a, an aftermarket car speaker where it has a big magnet and stuff and a bunch of tweeters and stuff like that. So it should work. Um, I checked on Arcade Shop and I checked Mike's Arcade. Nobody seemed to have a five and a quarter inch speaker. Or it, I think um, Arcade Shop had them, but I think they were uh, out of stock. If I remember correctly. So I just order a pair from Amazon when they come up, check to make sure they fit. We'll have to pull that coin door off before I take the paper off the front. Let me pop this T molding off, which should come right off, especially because it's particle board. The groove looks pretty good in it still. It does not look uh, all swollen or busted up, which is nice. 
I do got I do like it when they put the T molding down the back of these cabinets because when you transport these things and you slide them in on their back, at least that T molding protects those edges a lot better. This is just a smooth black tea molding, no texture to it. I don't know that I have any, I might have to order a roll. This cabinet probably uses more tea molding than normal, probably more like 30 feet rather than like a 20 or a 25 foot roll because this front right here, I might just see if I can order a 50 or 100 foot roll. I, I might have it, I don't know, I have it, I gotta check. I know I have a bunch of the textured tea molding, a couple hundred feet of that. I'm not sure on the uh, regular black. Check this front here. I'm sure it's screwed up. Basically, what I'm going to do is just continue to take this off. Obviously, there's no point in recording me peel the vinyl off the whole entire cabinet. I'll bet you within a half an hour, I should probably have this all cleaned up. There's a bunch of staples up this side here. I don't know why. but they're sticking out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna to continue to do this and then we'll come back, we'll pull out that coin door. Um, what I'm really kind of sucks is the back and everything, the top, all this has gotta come off. It's just all shot. This back's gotta come off and out. You know, let me check real quick. I'd like to save the original label. Um, wonder if I cut around it and we just take it off with the piece of black vinyl on the back. And then what I can do is we have some really, really thin double-sided vinyl where it's sticky on both sides. And what I can do is I can apply that to the back of this and then stick it onto the cabinet after I paint it. And then... Um, because I'm videoing this, I'll have a really good idea of where this goes location-wise. And it doesn't have to be perfect, because I think from the factory, they kind of just slap these on here in uh, sort of the right area. I don't think every cabinet was perfectly in the same spot. Yeah, I'd rather save this than try to recreate it. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we'll just put some double-sided. I'll show that to you when I do it. It's it's literally like as thin as this piece of paper. So I gotta take them off this back door too. Because this back door is also peeling everywhere. So I'll cut these out the same way. Try it real quick. So if anybody needs to do this, now you'll know that you can cut around it, peel it off.
So basically on this video, I just want to get the cabinet stripped down, um, get it ready to start doing the body work. We're going to fill in all the nicks and corners that are missing with fiberglass resin. Uh, maybe we'll do a thin coat of fiberglass resin on the sides of the cabinet. I'm not sure yet if I want to do that. See how the particle board feels. It feels pretty good. I don't think I need to do that, but we'll see. Oh boy, that's actually coming off without the back. This is a foil sticker, and nobody remakes them that I know of in foil. I think uh, somebody prints them with white ink. But now we have those off, which is awesome. I'll put those away in the cabinet so we don't lose them. And I can continue to go ahead and get the rest of this vinyl off the whole cabinet, and then we'll come back, we'll pop out that coin door, and we'll take the vinyl off around that. And then at that point, um, we'll be ready to start doing body work to it. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I've stripped off everything that I wanted to get off so far. Um, i got to pull the coin door. I'm going to pop that lower panel off, and there's a couple panels in the back I want to pop off because I think it's just going to make it easier to fix them. And especially this one down there, it unscrews, and the cleat is loose inside the cabinet, so I want to fix that. And then um, peel the rest of this vinyl off. I still have a hard time getting down real far, so... It's going to be easier for me to just sort of take it off if I can get the screws out. They're not all stripped. They're not Phillips screws. They are up here. Let me take this upper one off first. I think those bottom screws might be uh, rusted out. I think this will come out. Oh, you know what? It's stapled. Okay. Well, that's all right. We'll at least take the screws out so that we can put them in the tumbler and make the black, the heads look, we'll repaint them black, make them look brand new again. I was kind of hoping I could pop that panel out, but I don't think I want to mess with uh, taking the, the uh, staples out, so we'll leave that. Let's see if we can get the screw out of these, screws out of these bottom ones. This one I'm probably going to pop out because it's it needs some work. Yeah. Maybe it's just best to leave well alone. Well enough alone, we'll just uh, fix it on the cabinet, I guess. I got one screw that doesn't want to come out. Now what I'll do with this one, it's a little stripped. I'll put a toothpick or something inside the hole and I put the screw back in there with some glue. And then that'll see, make it go back in. All right, let's go around front. We'll knock out that, uh, that lower plate will take off. I know this one comes off. Because that's where the pedal would go if it was a racing game. So now I'll be able to clean that little bit of vinyl off and we'll be able to fix all this chipped up. And then we'll put a new piece of uh, T-molding on this top edge here. We'll just stick that in there for now. It's all nice and clean in there. Um, I also peeled the vinyl off of the top up there and the back door, which I just had to pop that lock out and throw that lock away because I'm missing the key and I don't have the, uh, the back of it's missing too. So let's pull off this coin door.
think it's a 5 16 but I'm not positive. Just strip this coin door down off camera and put all the nuts and bolts and everything in the tumbler. I don't have a coin bucket for it, but I might have one in the basement. I know it's a little different than the, the newer style coin buckets. I usually like to put them on all my games so that they're in there. Oh, and I decided when I was stripping off this uh, vinyl on the cabinet, I'm going to paint the sides white again so that if I were to sell this game one day and somebody didn't want that colorful artwork on the sides, that they could um, peel it off and it will be painted white and then they could put the factory style artwork back on it. It really doesn't matter if I paint it white or black. It's the same amount of work, so we'll just do it white. one clamp holding this wiring on. At least all the coin door wiring is intact. So that's all there. All the clamps are there. It looks like it's never been taken apart. Coin mechs are in there, so that's all good. So I'll just put that off to the side. I'll strip that down at a later date and uh, get them in the tumbler. They do have a sticker inside the cabinet here. Don't know that it's going to come off. Okay, this is just a manufacturer by Atari sticker. I'll see if I can't clean that up. We'll put it back on afterwards. Um, all right, so now we have that off. I'm going to peel that black vinyl off around the coin door area too, just to make sure Sorry, I wanted to put that uh, sticker in the cabinet with the other ones. I'm just going to peel this off as well, and there's a piece of T-molding that needs to come off. I just want to peel it off because I don't want to run into a problem and it bubbling up on me or something like that in the future. So I'm just going to get it taken care of now. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy at least 30 feet of, of T-molding. Probably, honestly, like 40. So I'll just probably get a 100-foot roll if I don't have it. I did bring the coin door out here and I did find a hinge that I believe I can make work. And what's on this wood is like, um, it's like a urethane almost. They must have done that to uh, keep it from wanting to swell up. Okay. So we have all the vinyl and everything loose on this cabinet that we want to get off. So now that's going to be ready for body work. Um, the back door, I just need to take the lock out, which I'll just do that now real quick. Just going to pop that out real quick. And then um, let's look at the hinge, see if we can do something with this hinge. Now, if you have a locksmith, you probably could get a new key made for this, but I'm missing the, the back part of it. I'll just end up putting a new lock on it. I'll save that just in case, but I, I have a bunch of these too. But yeah, I, I guess you could get a new key made for this. But I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, 
I don't even know if it's original, you know. So the hinge, let me go grab that. And we'll take a look at this. Okay, so this is what I have for a hinge. Obviously, I need to cut it down. <clears throat> um, but it looks like it'll fit in here. And it looks like this will go right on the back side of the door. And you can see there's little notches cut out of the back side of the door here where the hinge goes. So it looks like it's going to fit in there perfectly, actually. I just need to cut it to that height. And this is, for the most part, pretty sealed hinge. They have little indentations in the metal. And what those little indentations are doing is holding that pin from wanting to slide out of this hinge. So as long as I have that little indentation and then I cut it, you know, whatever height I need, I should be fine. I'm going to have to drill a hole. Obviously, the hole that's in there is not in the right spot. But we're just going to have to leave that hole because this is like, um, I don't know what type of material this is, but it's not a steel it's like a stainless or something and I can't weld that. So let me go grab a marker and a, and a cutoff tool and let's cut this hinge down and see how it lines up on there. All right, I mean, it would be nice to kind of take a chunk between the two, which I probably could, because there is, the pin is being held in right there. Maybe I will do that. Let me cut this right here first. Got my little, uh, this cutoff tool. I might have to change the blade. It's just about out. But yeah, maybe I'll cut that there. to go grab my grinder this isn't going to be tall enough This hinge came from a poker machine. I had bought a bunch of poker machines a couple years ago and took the 19 inch monitors out of them and took any of the hardware I could out of the cabinets to save. And luckily I saved hinges and stuff like this because it's coming in handy now. Okay, we need to cut it there. the lower hinge. quick get this one cut
save the rest of this in case I need it for something in the future. This first one's still a little warm, not too bad. I need to kind of deburr it so that there's not sharp metal. Now these stay silver. They got a little bit of like uh, oxidation on them. I'll probably just put them in the uh, tumbler. So now that fits right in that groove. Like that. And we'll have to put it into the cabinet to make sure that we have enough. We might have to make that groove a little deeper. Because when this shuts, this hinge shuts, it's got that little gap there. I'm guessing the original one probably shut right on top of it, so it was a, you know, a nice tight fit. But obviously, these ones don't do that. So let's hold uh, this door up to the back of the cabinet here and see what it looks like with this hinge in there. I don't want to drill holes yet until I'm sure that's where it's got to go. Actually, it's perfect. It's actually perfect. So now I need to get something that I can go through that piece of three quarter inch particle board and make a line, a hole. So I'm probably going to have to get drill bit or something to do that and I need to get something to kind of wedge this door tight against that hinge for a minute maybe this uh, probably this will be enough eh, not thick enough can I move you to flathead screwdriver and figure out how I'm going to get these holes marked Okay, I'm going to have to get some small carriage bolts for those. Chances are I probably have some. I cleaned up this other hinge once it cooled off as well. So basically, I just need a little drill bit. Just enough to just mark on that piece of metal. So that I know where I need to drill it. And we'll drill it on the drill press. So I have a flathead screwdriver here. I'm going to kind of wedge this in the other side here. And what that's gonna do is push it tight against that hinge. There we go. So now I can get a good accurate mark where these holes need drilled. Okay, slide it back in place like that. Gotta mark these two here. Well, that moved, but luckily I was holding on to the hinge when that happened, when that screwdriver fell out. So let's just see if our marks are there. And yes, they are. So we have a mark there, 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 and there. So now we can drill these on the drill press, make it a little bit easier. Now we gotta do the bottom hinge, same exact way. Gotta get it in there. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna drill like a, probably a 3 16 hole. We can always make them bigger if we need to. One thing I like about this drill press is it has a laser and it shines the laser right where you need to drill the hole. And I have this set at like a medium speed, which should be fine. Okay. So let's turn, we have a laser here. You can see it right there. And then we have a light too, if we need it. See if I can drill this without getting it spun around on my hand. Kind of goes on an angle a little bit but it should be all right unless i can find something to shim it up with that's not too bad Perfect. Just need to deburr the backside real quick. I'll go do that. And then these hinges are made. Okay, I cleaned up the holes. So I'm going to throw these in the bin in the can or container here where I'm going to use for all the tumbling of the bolts. So I'll tumble those with the bolts. And once I take apart the coin door, I'll do that. Now, let me show you the control panel here. Uh, this is a little beat up, it's kind of bent. So it's going to take me some work to get this straightened out, but I will get it done. Um, if you look here, it's got a real bad bend to it. And this is rusted out right here. So this piece of metal is supposed to come straight across here. Okay, so we're, it's rusted there and there. So what I'm going to do is probably cut a hunk of metal out of here and we'll weld the new one in. And then we got to figure out how we're going to straighten this from being bent 
but it looks like once it gets bolted in, maybe it won't be so bad. Maybe it'll straighten itself out. Just gotta try to be careful when I weld it that I don't um, warp it worse than it already is. So I don't know why this has a hole drilled in the center here because there is no markings on the cabinet. So I don't know if somebody did that. Was that done intentionally so that when the handlebars are getting yanked on, that's probably what bent this. So maybe I will drill a hole in the cabinet there and put a carriage bolt right there. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Uh, you have two latches here and then you have two bolts that go through the front here and here. So maybe I will do that. I mean, I don't see that being a problem. A black carriage bolt right there would look fine. And you're not even really gonna see it with the handlebars in the way. So I think I am gonna use that. And that will definitely help strengthen that up and there's plenty of wood right here it's two layers run a carriage bolt right through there and maybe i'll even put a metal plate right here on the edge because this is particle board and that hole's only to be about a quarter inch back so if i put like a metal plate here drill a hole and put a carriage bolt it won't bust out the wood in the future so i think that's what i'm going to do i like that idea and it's going to stop that warp problem it's going to straighten it right out when i bolt that down like that so I, yep, that's what I'm doing. Mine made up on that one. But you see how this is a little swelled up and it's kind of past the control panel a little bit. I wanna shave that down and get it straight. Um, I'm not gonna work on this control panel on this video. Um, I'll get the overlay taken off and then I'll do a video on me fixing this. Um, I mean, you guys have seen a million overlays get stripped off before. So I'll just do that off camera. It, it might come off, probably gonna be a pain in the butt to get off, but I'll get it, get it off and um, we'll work on fixing that. So basically, let's say that the next video, we will work on one side of the cabinet. So we'll lay this down on its side and we'll start fixing all the edges of the particle board that need fixed on the one side, because obviously we can only do one side at a time. So we'll do that and we'll work on welding up this control panel in the next video. Um, and then the following video, we can get the other side done and then we gotta do the front last. Um, and then after that, what I'm, my goal is, is trying to get all these metal parts ready so that I can get them all painted at the same time. I can paint the control panel, the speaker grill, the marquee bracket, um, upper and lower, oh, and the bracket that goes here that holds the glass. I still haven't looked yet to see if I have a piece of glass. I'm, I'm fairly confident I do have a piece. Um, and then also I have some metal frames for 19 inch monitors that we can use for this cabinet. And then we will take that CRT computer monitor and put it into that metal frame. And then we'll run a converter board that um, will convert our signal from our board to the computer monitor because it's obviously a VGA output on the computer monitor or input. So we're gonna have to take our wires from the game board into the converter and then out a VGA cable into the CRT monitor. I honestly think it's probably gonna look pretty decent. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever tried it before by using a CRT computer monitor. Um, I just kind of came up with it one day. I have, can't say that I've ever heard of anybody try it but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, and at least I'll have a CRT tube in there. I don't think there'll be scan lines. I don't know that you'll see that. I don't know how that was, how it's gonna work, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot better than sticking a flat screen monitor in here, just like a 19 inch Dell computer monitor or something. So at least I'll have a CRT. If I ever come across the right monitor, maybe I'll purchase one. I'm not, I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna buy one for six, $800. That's just not gonna happen. Um, and if it looks really good, I might just say the heck with it and leave it. I mean, we'll see what happens, but it's going to be, I'm going to take it out of its plastic housing and we're going to mount it into a, um, frame, a regular arcade monitor frame. So it's going to fit in the cabinet like it should. The only thing is we'll just have a VGA cable coming off of it and I'll have to cut the power cord off of it and wire it into, I'll put a Molex connector and we'll be able to plug it directly into the harness just like the original monitor did. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So, all right, um, see in here. We need to make a piece of plywood here.
for the uh, marquee light and I have to get a marquee light out of the basement, um, I have a couple fixtures we can use. So we'll put one in here. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're getting there. Uh, like I said, this weekend I'll probably get on this one side and get the control panel welded up and fixed and we will go from there. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, interested in seeing this thing come together, please like, subscribe, share, give the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later. Thanks.